that is a, uh, a marvellous effort. Um, we've been to swamps, our seven switchboards uh, around Australia and in New Zealand, uh, where our telecast, of course, is going live on TV3 Swamped uh, with calls of uh, sympathy from people, people who, who didn't personally know a lot of people who didn't personally know Denny Holmes, some who did, uh, acquaintances, uh, former motor racing uh, compatriots, messages of, of sympathy after the tragic news earlier today that Denny had uh, had passed away. It, apparently, there will be a coronial inquiry, but apparently suffering a, uh, a massive heart attack, either resulting in the car clipping the wall or as a result of the car clipping the wall, that may never, ever uh, be determined the passing of a, a great man at the age of uh, 56, 57, Dillingham. And uh, for all of those people that have called, we do appreciate uh, your calls and we know that uh, Denny's friends and uh, family and his teammates uh, appreciate the sentiment. 50 laps to go in the Tui's 1000, the great race of 92. So we're going to be here for quite a while yet with the pace car being having been out uh, four times so far for quite lengthy periods with the unbelievably uh, bad weather that we had uh, the pace of the race has been slowed right down but tony and johnny chicotto are up on the pace now tony longhurst just turned 35 in fact a couple of days ago and uh, they prepare this car up at norwell in uh, queensland just to the northern end of the gold coast it's been uh, a successful combination between tony longhurst and uh, frank gardner they ran sierras of course or they ran bmws initially then sierras now back to uh, the bmw and he's won everything in sight. They won Bathurst in 88 in a Sierra when uh, Tony was partnered by Thomas Mazira, who's now with the Holden Racing Team. And uh, Frank Gardner, whilst he's uh, requested, you know, that he just doesn't want to talk to anybody at the moment about Denny Holm, because as I said before, they were great uh, friends and great rivals. And uh, he said the last thing that uh, Denny would have wanted was would have been to pull the race team out of the uh, the event and so they're out there and they're out there to win if they can that's a big ask against the nissans but they're running in fourth position great job that tony longhurst is doing at the moment as well really trying everything he knows with the little bmw that's the result the black tape on the front right there of uh, johnny chicotto's uh, crunch with the wall at the top of the mountain in the warm-up remarkable isn't it to have yeah. a, a bingle in the warm-up and a, a driver with his credentials Still, he may not be out of the woods yet. This, this weather is doing all sorts of things. You predicted rain 25 minutes ago in about half an hour, and the big black clouds that look so awesome have moved away again, and we've got another big patch of blue moving from the direction of Orange. Yes, well, I, I still wouldn't bet against rain before the end of the race because it's coming over in, in waves like that sort of 25, 25 minute intervals. And, uh, I think thunderstorms are a distinct uh, possibility before the day is out. Car 17, the Shell Sierra, and hasn't this uh, car surprised a few people here at Mount Panorama this weekend? We always knew that Dick Johnson and John Bauer were going to be quick. We didn't quite realise how quick until Dick Johnson got behind the wheel in the shootout uh, for Tui's Top Gun yesterday and turned in uh, just an unbelievable qualifying lap of 2.12.989 second fastest ever touring car lap run here on the Mount Panorama circuit and people said yeah well that's Dick I mean he's quick but uh, he won't see the distance ah, he's doing a pretty good job of it at the moment we've got um, some of the telemetry from Johnson's car in the hands of Johnny Bauer at the moment there you are you can see what the car is actually doing this is the way they monitor the health of these vehicles as they race back in the pits Yeah, very often the, uh, the the guys in the uh, in pit lane actually find out there's something wrong with the car before the driver does, before it uh, he gets a chance to look at the gauges, and you can see the turbo boost pressure there in the middle going up and down as Johnny Bow presses on the throttle and then backs off either for a slower car in front of him or, or one of the tighter corners. So we've got a taco at the top, Richard. Yep. And then we've got. Uh, Barometric pressure, how, how much, <laughs> how how much pressure we've got in there, yeah. and we've got uh, speedo Speed. there that reads out below that in, um, in and units. Then, and then you can see what gear he's in at the bottom there, just drops down to second as he makes his way down through the dipper. Are some of the slower cars. And now, 
So these days for the, the contemporary touring car driver with this sort of technology available, Big Brother is always watching. You can't say that you didn't over-rev it. You can't say that you weren't hammering the brakes. Certainly is the, the, uh, the telemetry readout from Klaus Niedsbitz run in the top 10 yesterday showed how uh, his foot had slipped off the throttle twice and the boost and the revs just died. You can't come back and fib to the team boss anymore. <laughs> temperatures they see so the water temperature at the top and the oil temperature and the oil pressure down below and indeed if we're getting any charge from the alternator that car looks pretty healthy it's looked healthy all day it sounded healthy all day and it's doing uh, the shell team proud Larry Perkins could uh, perhaps have done with having a look at one of those when the battery died on his car earlier on First the battery, and then the alternator, and I think they've actually been in twice to look at the alternator. It's cost Larry Perkins a great deal of time in the great race, the 30th anniversary. Great race. Johnny Bow really trying very hard indeed with Dick Johnson Sierra as he makes his way up the hill. Coming up on uh, the Daily Planet, he won't be stopping uh, for any reason. Number two, uh, Nissan with Anders Olofsson at the wheel coming in. Now this will be a driver change. Crompton will get in here. Mark Oates was there. Absolutely. Will go. Neil Crompton getting in. Anders Olofsson out of the car. These guys are going to affect the front brake pad change. Due to those pace laps early in the race, it was nice and cool. They have reduced their brake pad wear quite substantially. So as you can see, doing a quick brake pad change. Uh, Freddie Gibson said he could affect this change in about 40 seconds front to back. So they're only looking up the front. So that'll be even shorter still. I've just been timing the gap between the 17 car and the car two is about 35 seconds. So that'll drop Crompton back and of course move the 25 car up into third position. It's going to be an interesting tactical battle from here. Well, the set of pads going into that rear wheel there took a little bit longer than the rest of the car, so the stop taking longer than uh, Freddie Gibson would like, I'm sure. But wheel on, the air jack hammers the nut tight. And back into the race goes Neil Crompton, now at the wheel of car number two. Here's John Bow. Still pedalling hard. Second position overall. Now with the pit stop having taken place too. The Anders Olofsson, Neil Crompton car, well clear in second of the third place man. Still trying to close down the gap on the leader, Mark Scaife, at the wheel of the car that he shares with Jim Richards. Dick Johnson getting ready. The Shell boys obviously are going to be coming in shortly. He's getting geared up for... Uh, what will be the final driver change for this car. Race leader still Richards and Scaife in the number one Nissan with a 34 second margin over this car, the Bauer Johnson Shell Sierra car 17 in second place and you can see the other times they're out to 25. Longhurst, Chicago, the Benson and Hedges BMW in third place, fourth spot car number two. Olofsson and Crompton, the second, Winfield, Nissan GTR. Fifth place held by car number 16, Win Percy, Alan Grice, the HRT Commodore. Lap one, one six of 161. And while we're away, Mark Scaife into the pits, Jimmy Richards into the car. But while that was happening, that has enabled John Bow, the number 17 car, to go through and take over the lead in the race but he has yet to pit and there's the man that has to take over for the run to the chequered flag and that's dick johnson so plenty of drama here jb has driven this car superbly trying to get in is he going to do the pit stop now no he'll take another lap or so so the number 17 car as we go to jimmy richards apparently a problem there with the fire extinguisher inside the car it's gone off as you can see across to the right it's covered one of the lens with uh, foam just up to the top right yeah. hand of the picture you can see the foam all over the right scan 
What a Jim wouldn't appreciate if we asked to come in and just clean the lens for us, would he? <laughs> That's the shot. <laughs> That's the shot. That's why we can't generate race cam out because the fire extinguisher has gone off inside the car. Actually, it's spitting. We lost a bit of fun there. Let's have a look. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let it put you off, Jim. So that's the situation as Jimmy Richards goes through. The man who created uh, a lot of interest here yesterday, or certainly all throughout this week, Larry Perkins in the Bob Jane T. Marts Commodore. He's in our pit studio with Bruce. Sure is, uh, Mike. You know how to make a headline or two, Larry, both on and off the track, and you've had a pretty good run until today when it really counted. You've had no luck at all. Yeah, that's true. Um, we had a, uh, our wire to the alternator broken. That uh, we, I didn't realise that the wire had broken, and uh, I thought I had a dud alternator, and the battery slowly ran flat on Steve when he was out, and uh, we replaced the battery, not knowing the alternator uh, wire was broken. And uh, anyway, it's the way it goes, and uh, at this stage it hasn't gone uh, our way, but uh, we're still pressing on. It's running soundly, but we're obviously lost about two or oh, three, three, three or four laps. Yeah, you're in 12th position, I think, at the moment, but as you said, running on strongly. But I think we're about to get some more weather. I mean, it was unbelievable carnage early today out there on the track, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. That rain fairly pelted down. There was blokes going off everywhere and... Uh you know, it was um, survival of the like fittest at, at early on, stay on the track, keep out of trouble and press on because it was going to be one of these races and uh, it hasn't uh, surprised anyone that's been unpredictable. What are your forecasters telling us? Gary Wilkinson's an excellent forecaster. He says rain for sure. Are uh, you feeling the same at this stage before the end of this race? Well, just before I look, came in, I looked out the window. There's some awful looking clouds coming in from the west and uh, I wouldn't be the slightest bit surprised if we've got a real heavy downpour. Keep our eye here on John Bow because Dick Johnson's getting ready and he's about to come come in now I think and change so this is a critical part of the race uh, you've been pretty hard on the, the scafe and uh, and uh, Richard uh, Richard's entry saying that the extra weight wouldn't make any difference uh, the verbal jousting you've been carrying on with this and you might be right Larry after all this they might win it oh, I'm pretty sure what I've been saying is right this is certainly critical here for the, the uh, yes, for Bow and Johnson. Let's go down and join AJ, who's right there at the moment. Yes, Dick Johnson jumping into the number 17 Shell Sierra, the new race leader. They are changing tyres. They're going to have a look at the brake pads. They're not quite sure if they're going to change it. Team manager Ross Stone, I only spoke to seconds ago, said they are going to have a look at them. This is their last chance. They do have the lead and they don't want to give it up. I say that as the Nissan of Jim Richards goes straight past the start-finish line. It doesn't look like they're going to change the pads from here. As Just as I say that too, they do. This windscreen getting a bit of a clean. Johnson's ready to go. A face of stone. John Bow gets out dripping wet, but a very happy man. And everything seems to be going to plan. The back wheels are fine. We're just waiting on the two front wheels. As they simultaneously put the pads on now, it will only be a matter of seconds here in the shell pit. Well, Johnson in the car. Thanks, AJ, for that change of pads here. I was just discussing with Richard Hay during that pit stop whether or not they could have kept the car out there if it did rain. They might have had the advantage of a pad change and also uh, a better selection of tyres. But uh, they might have been fairly low on fuel. They've been running. Uh They've been running the car hard for the last hour and a half. Yeah, I think they would have been low on fuel, but this uh, this stop is actually taking a lot longer, I think, than the team would wish. 40 seconds, just over 40 seconds is what uh, the Nissan managed to do it in. He still rejoins in second position, though. Good pit stop that, but I have a feeling it won't be long before... Uh, His Longhurst just went past us now. So we're going to see Longhurst go around Hill Corner about the same time as Dickie Johnson emerges from the pits. This is going to be very interesting stuff. Fifty-eight seconds behind the lead car of Mark Scaife. Dick Johnson left the pits, and when he came in, I should tell you that he was just over 30 seconds in front, so that stop cost him about...